Hello everyone, this is Amon Rod 133 and today I'm going to be making an in-depth analysis of the Pan's Labyrinth um, and in specific I'm, I'm going to be focusing on um, happy endings and why do that we need happy endings if we need them at all and uh, how realistic this movie is and how it's really a, I guess a criticism and a tradition of fairy tales and started from that um, I remember seeing this interview with the Toro uh, about the movie and that he proposed a movie to Hollywood. And Hollywood told him that they will make the movie, they will help him out and, and finance him and whatnot, but he had to change the ending and, uh, and at the end, Ophelia had to leave. So he didn't like that and he refused uh, the offer, so he went and made the movie on his own and the amazing movie that we now have. And... For example, if you guys know, Rogue One from Star Wars, the Star Wars spin-up movie is gonna be coming out in a couple of weeks. And there was this leak uh, a couple of weeks ago that that they had to edit the movie and that the movie was set back because of that, because apparently it was too dark and, movie, and Disney didn't like that. And it was too dark, so they had to turn it down. What else? So, let's start by analyzing the characters and I'm gonna be focusing only on the on the big four um, the mom, the dad, the kid and uh, the housekeeper so let's start with the mom which is Carmen um, we meet her right away in the story uh, she's we only see her pregnant and very very late in her pregnancy and she's having a very harsh pregnancy Later we find out that she she shouldn't have trouble because she was in a, such a delicate state that that only made her worse. Um, and she's very patient, she's very caring for Ophelia, though she wants Ophelia to kind of wake up and pick up with the world. Um, we find out that, that she's a widow and uh, she met the colonel and, 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 and I think she knows that the guy is an asshole, right? I think she knows a total douchebag, cold-blooded, and, but I think she doesn't care, or she tries to oversee that by the fact that she's kind of in the right side of the story. If you read a, a little bit about the, the context of the movie, uh, this was real. Spain went through a very harsh fascism stage, um, so she was definitely on the right side by marrying this guy. Um, she was at the, at the same time securing a good future for her, for the kid and for Ophelia. So she was being smart, she was playing I guess her car smartly. Um, even though that the guy was kind of a douche and later we find out that he doesn't like really care for her. What he really cares is that she's pregnant with um, his son. But we really don't get to see most of her we just see of her at the end, and uh, well, kind of at the end and at the beginning of the movie, because she's very sick, and she kind of leaves Ophelia, I guess, unprotected in this very harsh world. She's very patient; she cares a lot for Ophelia, but she she also loses her passion in her because she doesn't, I guess, pick up. Uh, now the general, yeah. or the colonel. Vidal, that guy is amazing. I, I think he's the Joker from this movie, uh, from The Dark Knight. Without him, the movie wouldn't be what it is. He's such a good actor, he, and the character is such a good character. Because he's not chaotic evil, he's, I think he's thoughtful evil. That makes him, I think, even worse. Um, so, we know little about him, but what we know is that apparently the dad, when he died, uh, the dad was also in the military, uh, when the dad died, he smash his clock, his watch, and, and um, wanted his son to have the clock and, and the watch and to know the exact time that his father died. And we kind of know, he denies the story, but we kind of know it's true because he tries, to, he tries to do the same thing when he's about to die. So, like I said, he just sees Carmen, the mom, as a human incubator. He doesn't really care for her. See a romantic or any kind of relationship to be honest. They're married, they both have the ring, but it's just a 
just cares about what, why he's there. He just cares to establish order and um, about the sun. We, the only thing that we see him care for really is about the sun. And he makes a couple of comments where he has to be the mom where the sun is always going to be the sun. So he, he doesn't really care for her. She's just a human incubator. And I think that's very realistic about the movie because of all the fairy tales that we see, there's a lot of sexism, but it's implicit. Right? It's not like they're telling you, oh, in this time period, men thought that women were less. No, they're just implied. But in this movie, they're really telling you this guy thought that women were less. This guy thought that she was just a human incubator, he thought of all the other women that they were less and inferior. Kind of. Um, he actually despises her again, the daughter. She despi he despises her, uh, I think, because she's a woman. Which, I mean, she cannot help. And I think because she's weak. And, and she's still a kid, and she's very young. And she's always in her fantasy world. Um, she reads a lot of fairy tales. And, and I think she, he despises her because he's all, she's always in the, trying to uh, find cover of her mom. And I think he despises that. He despises weakness in women. So that will, she was everything that he despises. He's a total douche. He's a cold blood and murder. Brings the uh, almost every single violence into this movie. And definitely, the violence scenes that are in this movie have him. They're so, they're so cold. They're so in your face. Like uh, this movie, this doesn't shy away from the violence, and that's so cool. So he's a total douche. Um, I read from Guillermo del Toro that he he intend for. for that he was inspired by the movie by Alice in Wonderland and by the fairy tales, um, the regular Disney fairy tales, that, that he wanted to make the that this guy is basically the counter the counterpart of the evil stepmom. This guy is the evil stepdad. So let's go with Ophelia the King. Something that I, I love about this character in the acting and the directing of, of this character is that she's so she's so cute. Like, um, there's a scene where she's running away with the like, with little brother and he meets a girl face to face. And she doesn't like fight, she doesn't talk back, she just stares she just stares at him like fucking afraid. And I did this I did this awesome. Nowadays we see a lot of kid characters having adult reactions. But aren't we all as kids like uh, affected by or surrendous so or surrendous but we don't really get it and we don't really react until we are adults that we think back and we realize well that was that was not cool or that shouldn't have been like that. But as kids we really can react, we really can reason what we're seeing it, and him and, and the, uh, Vidal and Carmen, they're very dead, they won't lose it with her because she's always in this fantasy world, and she doesn't really understand the reality world that she lives in, in which is a very harsh world, and it's about to get even worse because of the, 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 the garment that is going to be put in place, but she's, tries, she's trying to understand the fantasy world. I love how she is living through a very harsh time, but she never once questioned it. She never once said, well, why are we here? Why is he a military? Or why are we a military race? She never does that. And I think that is very, that's very kid-like. Like, yeah, kids make questions when they're curious, but there are a lot of things that they can't process because they just don't have a cognitive development to do so. So I think she was very realistic in that sense. Also in the sense that we get to see her break the rules, we get to see her lie, we get to see her cower, and that's very, that's very realistic, I like that. She's kind of a hero to her own story, but she has all these flaws, she's not perfect. She will definitely get affected and changed by the world, uh, by the circumstances. So, later on, um, uh, the final big character in this is uh, Mercedes. 
uh, where she's a housekeeper. She she's a double agent. She's intentionally low key. She later rebel, reveals to me that that she she was intentionally low key because he is very prideful and that he wouldn't suspect of a woman because he thought women were capable of I guess doing anything to him. And despite her feeling coward, she is the only one that physically harms him. And she is the only one that actually credits him. Um, and that is such a cool scene, right? Like I was I was shocked when that happened and I enjoyed it so much. Uh, it was that big yeah moment. Um, but she's kind of maternal with Ophelia. She she's the only character that when Ophelia goes to her to tell her about the fairy, the, the fantasy world, she doesn't question her. She just goes along with it. Um, and I think that Ophelia, I guess, tries to find refuge in her. Ophelia finds out that she's a double agent, but she tells her that. She, she doesn't want anything bad happening to her, so she she keeps her a secret. Um, and I want to make a comparison between be, who's really who's really the monster in this movie, who's really the yeah the bad guy, the monster. Um, is it the monster with the eyes in the in the hands, which by the way, way to be creepy. That's that's pretty pretty cool. Um, when Ophelia enters this monster's realm, I guess, she enters making a door with a shock, and she, get out, she gets out the same way. And the monster, we see him walking in a very, I guess, staggered way. I suppose because he was in a slumber and he hadn't eaten. Uh, apparently the food that he had in front of him, it wasn't for him to eat, it was to lure people in. We, we see very little of him, we see that he kills children and he has a pile of, of kids' shoes. That's very creepy, that's so cool. But when Ophelia at the end is trying to uh, retrieve the, the brother from Vidal, she enters Vidal's, I guess, realm, which is this place where he chills, uh, with a shock, with the same shock, and she gets out the same way. I mean, she drugs Vidal, and Vidal, when he's chasing her, he, he, he kind of walks in the same staggered way. So, I think there was a direct comparison between Vidal being a monster and the, the monster in the fantasy world. Um, but I definitely think that Vidal is a bigger monster here. Um, and something, something very intentional about this movie is that the movie is not gonna tell you, it doesn't tell you at all, and it's open for interpretation. And I had this argument with a friend: um, was she really imagining this, or was it real? Any of it? Uh, there's, there isn't much evidence. My only argument why it's real is because when she puts the mandragora underneath the mom's bed, she gets better. But that could have been the only chance, right? Um, also, when, when the Vidal throws them and the the plant into the fire and it starts burning and twitching. The mom starts feeling ill, but again, that could have been chance. Just the stress, maybe. Um, so they, they never really tell you, like, is it real, is it not real? Everything that she sees and everything that she goes through in the, the fantasy world it can be explained by her being delusional or the characters or the surroundings just like her misinterpreting or her wanting to see something that wasn't there um, but the end but the movie at the end is just it's so harsh the reality world is very harsh I mean it's, it's in the middle of a, of a basically a war um, though the war had ended though um, and the fantasy world is very harsh as well too like she has to do these three tasks and uh, she does not very easily in the second one she, up and it gets to fairy tales. The, the pants get really, really mad at her and uh, like, it, start, it starts telling her all these crappy things like you're not who we thought you were, you're never gonna go back to your real world, uh, stay here with your humans and whatnot. So it's, it's a very hard reality in which she can't get a break, right? The reality is so crappy, the moments are dying, and then on the 
on the other hand, in the fantasy world, like, she, the, the, the band is really there to test her, not really to help her, if you didn't notice. Um, so at the end, and uh, I think this, this is so cool, when she, without Shasker, shoots her and she just falls into the ground and her blood spills over and apparently that was a unnecessary use of blood, right? And that apparently opens a portal because when she's agonizing she gets to see in, the, in this fantasy world she gets to see the mom and she's kind of a nail like really cool and, uh, she has uh, the brother she sees the dad as a king, the mom as a queen she sees the panzer and the pants is really not now it's really nice and friendly, the, fairy, the three fairies are there and everyone is applauding for her. And this is the first time that you see real, I guess, light in the, in the, in the scenes because in all the scenes of the pan appears there in the dark and it's very dark and all this movie is very dark, very in the shadows kind of thing. So after that, she, she, the scene come back, comes back to her agonizing and she finally passes away and you never really know if she really wanted to she got to open the, the portal with her blood or if she really her, her brain was playing just breaks in her and really delivered her what she wanted to see before she died which I think it was a nice way to die if you're gonna die anyway um, so if you really read a little bit about the story it's playing the scene get fascism until the 70s, late 70s, when they enter a civil war. So the story has no happy ending for anyone. Um, when, the, when the colonel gets crafted and he has the baby to Mercedes and, and tells Mercedes that he wants the son to know who his father was and the exact time that he died. And she interrupts him very abruptly not even gonna know your name. Um, so there's really not a happy ending for anyone, anyone. And we, we really don't know if Mercedes went into the fantasy world or world. And I think all of this makes this movie so amazing. So amazing. I read this post about uh, and read it, those movies that you went into the movie but you really didn't know what, what was it about and I read about this guy that went into the pants that went and he just saw the poster and thought it was cool enter the movie and he said that he was so shocked he, that it has, such an, it has such an impact on him and I think that is something that we're losing in movies right now um, for a couple of reasons um, the main one is like the, now the focus is on money, money making which I think that's why it happens Capitalism, right? Um, because now, as opposed to the past library, for example, the movies try to spin the story. And I'm, and I'm gonna match on Marvel movies. Just because I think they do that a lot. I do, I do like a couple Marvel movies, just very few. But for example, if you, if you see it, the, the movies just spoon feed you the story. They, they, they don't leave they you interpret. They don't and they just make you sit down, get this all this information into your brain, and you don't even have to think about it because the story is so straightforward. And with the pants library, the story is so straightforward, but there's so much room for interpretation, there's so much fantasy, there's so much, and maybe it's not real, maybe it is real, kind of deal. Also, <clears throat> surprisingly enough, like there, right now, um, Superhero movies are so famous, are, are so are so cool to make. And surprisingly enough, they kind of shy away from the from real violence. From, I, I mean, from real, real violence, death, torture, whatnot. Which this movie doesn't at all. When when you see violence in this movie, it's gonna the, the camera is not gonna change to another direction. Is that you're gonna cut into another scene? You're gonna see the whole violent scene until it ends and I read that the Toro did that intentionally because he wanted to have an effect on the audience, an emotional effect on the audience not really horrify the audience 
Um, so I think that the, the movies right now are such in a movie making is such in a crossroads because uh, right now pleasing the audience seems to be the number one priority to make money. Have a very straightforward, very pleasing, very non-controversial story to please the audience so people buy your tickets to go see the movie. Um, and also, I, I think they ironically, since apparently they're buying the movies with all these special effects and whatnot, but they don't, they really shy away from real violence. So you get to see a, a fantasy diluted violence, and a real violence where people really get hurt and really die. Um, but I, I think we're missing this aftertaste, like that Reddit post that I read. Uh, this aftertaste where you And for example, this movie, I don't think this covers much in terms of philosophy or um, give you something thinking of something that you can apply in your own life. But it still leaves you thinking, you know? It doesn't have to be a, this big kind of philosophical movie like the arrival was for, for me. Um, but I, I, I think we're losing that altogether. I think we're just losing this, uh, this mystery movie making. We're missing that uh, aftertaste. Because uh, it appears that the big studios now think their audiences are just very stupid, very dumb. And I will agree that the majority of people are playing dumb, but we're not that dumb, to be honest. Um, it, it appears that the, the big studios think that m movie goers are so sheep like that uh, they need something very soft, very easy to shoot, very easy to process. But at the same time, very likable, right? God forbid we're gonna see something uh, that is gonna make us reflect or make us think or something very dark or whatnot. God forbid that, right? And I think as an audience, we also have um, a saying on that by the, by the movies that we choose to see in the movie theater. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely, I guess the conclusion is that uh, uh, this movie is such an amazing movie because of the. It's so realistic, and I think that makes it so good. Even if, if the movie is about fantasy, but even in the fantasy, it's so realistic. Um, and I think we're definitely missing that nowadays. So yeah, amazing movie. If you haven't seen it, for sure go see it. I mean, for sure see it. The, this movie is fucking awesome. It's gonna rock your world. Fair warning, as you may have seen, it's very depressing. But... It's pretty cool, and the the pants design is so awesome, so amazing. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate that you you sticking out with me for such a long video. Um, definitely leave a like and subscribe. And thank you so much.